Hey, Sean. I can't stick around hey. for too long. I've got another call. But, yeah, I just uh, wanted to touch yeah, base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. So, yeah, I was just, you know, I guess the, my experience with hackathons in the context of CZI is like they do generate a lot of motion, but we haven't generated the sort of a product that we're moving towards. And that's, I guess I just want to kind of make sure that we're doing stuff to get off the schneid there. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you know that colloquialism, but. I do not. It's basically, you know, move, move from center, uh, create like sustainable, positive motion. And so I like, like I, I view hackathons as events. And I, I think you'd probably do as well. And maybe, maybe you're thinking around the hackathon is that it's an impetus to a sustained effort, probably. No, the, the whole event is a sustained, it's basically a business. Uh, you, you can check it out on the doc. It's, it's structured in six month sprints, right? That mm -hmm. continuously develop products based on sustainability and governance models. So it's, it, we, we have the same desire to, to make sure things move forward. But it's really okay. important that when we're forming this, this is not my first time doing one of these. It's very yeah. important that when we're forming this, we give space for everyone to, to we want to collect ideas and then from those ideas, choose and, and move stuff forward. Yeah. So, no, I... so right now, it, it would be great to, to get that on the dock. I think um, some ideas were just shared with folks from the EOSS funding thing. Uh, and they, they added some ideas to the doc that I think also connect with impact met metrics. And I think most of these things will end up being connected to a similar, uh, similar track. We'll have topics and subtopics, et cetera, but we're still growing sort of the contributor base for this early, early stage. So we want to make sure we're leaving room for new people when they come in to see things, digest, think about something and then contribute instead of just being bombarded yeah. with, with information and I'm, I'm so I think I felt like coming out of the event that Chris hosted in Sweden that there was I think some momentum and shared understanding to the need to more effectively and consistently connect scientific output back to software as like one task as I pointed out in my email but another task is trying to understand the, the sustainability and life cycle state of the software that's being funded. And I think both of those problems for different reasons represent challenges uh, in the open source research software universe. And that the funders who were at that meeting that Chris hosted, I think recognized those two uh, important questions. Um, yep. So so, some, so I guess, I don't know where the collecting efforts are. And Dan was at the event in Sweden as well. I don't know if you have any thoughts, Dan, on on the relation. And I guess what Jonathan and I are starting to talk about is the relationship between things like the hackathon and so I, I want to stress it's not a hackathon. It's a it's a workshop oh. that includes a hack. It's an event, right? So we're okay. using different words because there's the CZI hackathons or there'll probably be a hackathon, but it's just a an organized gathering of people aiming to produce forward motion, like you were saying, because there's enough declarations, there's enough uh, uh, events that don't produce sustainable forward motion that we can use those older events that work on that stuff to inform our forward motion, build that, those things. So yeah, I do like, think that what you're describing is, is something that we can do at this event, but it's just, we're not at the stage of actually deciding what we're gonna do at the event because we're still talking to more people and bringing them in. So well, just I, add it to that table so and I, I think we'll, yeah we'll bring it up okay um so i think i think part of my thinking about wanting to start working along the lines of these two i think known issues is that the like it's a year away this event that you're talking about and i think there's work that we can do things that we can explore in that year Absolutely. There's a whole timeline, if you scroll down, that structures okay. out how we would explore things. Uh, so is, it, it, I see these are these are timelines in advance. Yes. So we're at months 12 through nine. It's like T minus 12, right? So months 12 through nine, we're ideating and getting people who are interested in building this stuff. 
So what what you're describing, I imagine, is something that's going to happen at the event. But we're just it's there's a coalition aspect to this and a coordination aspect that we, we want to make sure that people, as we bring them in, have space, yeah, uh, uninfluenced time to put down their own desires and their own what what, what they would like to see built out uh, in, to, to benefit this space. And the long term vision of this is that we're going to have a list of all these things. We're obviously not going to be able to do everything in one meeting so we can earn one sprint, but we'll have a list that so we can do multiple sprints over and over again. And having that list helps us get sustainability funding for multiple runs, hopefully. Uh, so I, I am on board with everything you're saying. Uh, it's just we're not at that stage of deciding, and it would be unfair to other people to actually decide right now. Uh, what we we do at this event, but I do I, need to. I have another call. I, I need that. to. I can't skip. Um, yeah. So the the most beneficial thing, the way that that would this could uh, help, is to put your idea on the table, like the other folks have, and then uh, if you have ideas on how to modify the timeline, I think that should be a discussion in the for uh, in the email thread, uh, etc. But yeah, once it's on that table, what we'll do in December, we'll try to set up a call in December or January with everyone that can make it and we'll talk things out. But in December, we'll start asynchronously saying, hey, these kind of look similar. We could probably combine these into a single event next October. These are a little different. Like Nicole's idea of reproducible notebooks is probably separate from impact metrics. It's a great idea, but it's gonna be a different sprint than those two for sure. And yeah, hopefully we'll I get think like that, three or four yeah. I think the idea that I have is around uh, trying to understand, I think impact and assessment are interconnected, but not necessarily the same thing. Mm -hmm. If we want to understand the sustainability of software, that's one activity or one set of metrics and understandings. If we want to understand the impact of that software on research outcomes, I think that's a parallel thread yes and i see Dan i would generally a couple agree with things that. they're uh, oh great paper dan they are they're very related but they are slightly separate i entirely agree with that but okay okay i have, I have to jump them not supposed to be like this health so apologize but i right. just distressed I, I i want to do what you're doing too at this call is that at this meeting is that, in October, is this is this a standing conflict that you have, Jonathan? Uh, no, no, it's just a one-off. We're okay. doing some landscape analysis. So I gotta... All right. No, I, I'm usually at these calls. It's usually yeah. me, you, and Dan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just this week. Last time it was me and uh, Claude, but yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Dan, I don't know if you have any thoughts on what we were discussing. No. Not really. I'm, uh, I would say, honestly, I'm just kind of letting it move along and, and seeing where it goes at this point. I, I think there's a bunch of interesting things that are being discussed, but I don't feel like I have a really strong opinion. And so I'm yeah, kind of kind of seeing what everybody else thinks before I kind of decide if it's, I don't know, I guess what, uh, how I would join in. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the only reason I just put in these two papers was it just the uh, comment from, uh, I guess, on the doc that you were looking at about reproducible notebooks just made me think about these two different groups that are working. I, so I'm part of one of these groups. It's a PhD student of mine, and then the other one is a group in France that I'm not connected with, but we just actually realized that we're doing kind of similar things. So. Yeah, I know Jonathan said reproducible notebooks, and I'm just trying to find it in this document. In that table on the, like the third one down. Oh, there we go, yeah. <clears throat> I would say neither of these are exactly notebooks, but um, I think it's related and workflows sometimes are notebooks and sometimes they're scripts. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I think, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think the workflow terminology is, is morphing around notebooks to some extent. I've seen a bit of a decline in the interest in use of workflow tools. 
I mean, I guess the difference to me is that um, typically workflows are run the whole thing at once and, and don't or typically step through something. But otherwise, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll mention I also put a note, uh, I added one thing in the agenda document. Uh, that SC24 buff that's the second for the bottom. Ooh. And sorry for using chaos in the title. It's okay. I didn't even see chaos in the title, but maybe I have to click this link. Yeah, it was it was in the agenda as well, but that's that's fine. But yeah, it's it's there in the title. Uh, oh no, it's, we don't have a copyright on chaos. Uh, with one S. <laughs> uh, be uh, sued by the Linux Foundation. So. No, I don't think they care. Oh, Greg's leading that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And sorry. And the reason that that um, came up is that we, uh, in our internal uh, course of meeting, talked about this a bit on Monday and how we're actually going to organize this in, I guess, about three or four weeks. Um, but then there was also a, a metrics working group meeting that we had yesterday where where this came up a little bit as well so and are there are there any parts of that that may feed back into metrics that we create and measure yeah i think so or I, I believe so but i don't know that i can say this in a useful way at this point but what we're right. thinking this is this hour and a half is basically going to be two panels more or less and one panel is going to be about foundations and one panel is going to be about metrics um, so in the metrics one, we'll be trying to get uh, maybe five people to talk about what different projects are doing in metrics, what they want to do, uh, what they can't do. Um, so and and hopefully that would overlap with things that chaos is either uh, has defined or has a way to collect, or maybe it would lead into ways to collect things that have been defined or new things that could be defined. So anyhow, so so half of it will be will be metrics focused and I think there's probably a substantial overlap with chaos from that. Awesome. No, uh, I, I think I think if uh, you know my email back to Jonathan's thread, the interest I have is like I was saying to him, just not waiting a year uh, to sort these things out because I think we have tools that we can experiment with around making these these metrics visible to scientific open source developers. Yep. Yeah, I think that's, um, I mean, that was part of part of what came up in the metrics discussion yesterday was how do we actually measure any of these things? Um, and and so I know that, that chaos has some tools, um, but I don't think we've quite made the connection to actually get anything working in a in a way where it creates the, I don't know, a, a regular uh, way of looking at things and acting on them. Is there a, at, at one point I thought Greg's participation in this call might help get us to that point. Are there other points of collaboration that, that as you see, I guess, other points of collaboration to you know, help us produce views of the data that are the most useful to and Greg as a use case, but other scientific open source or research open source folks? Right. I mean, yeah, I think I think Greg and Addy are really the right people for that. My my part of the project is more on the foundation side than on the metric side, so I don't um, yeah. I don't feel like I should uh, should get too involved in the metrics part. I mean, just from lack of time. Uh, yeah. Else. So, um, and and I'm not sure uh, kind of what's happened. Maybe. Um, yeah, maybe I can try to encourage them to maybe to come next time. I don't know if there is if they're having a conflict or not at this time as well. So yeah, um, I, I, and say that I I won't be um, on this in two weeks um, because I'll be I think I'll be on a plane if I remember right. I, I don't know. I'll be doing something. But yeah, on, I um, on... <clears throat> well, I'll I'll um. I emailed Greg and Addy like, I don't know, maybe a month or six weeks ago and I didn't hear back, but maybe they're busy. So I'll just, I'll ping them again and just ask. I mean, I think even a lightweight informal 
uh, way of working together may be helpful mutually. Okay. And I think you and I know the rest of the things that are here. <laughs> yeah, I did. I have to say, I didn't actually read them in great detail. Um, I'm sorry. Been working on they're all hours. pertaining they're all pertaining to events that we are conversations that the two of us have already been in so um okay <laughs> i don't think there's a lot that will uh i see claude joined us um but uh, yeah i don't think there's uh much in the agenda that you and i are not at least familiar with and that uh claude might not be familiar with um okay well, I mean, depending on if we do have things to talk about or not, um, I actually, in one minute, in theory, have a yeah. call for my organization, how they're going to be participating in this SE24 conference that I kind of should yeah. go to. Oh. I, I think uh, there's nothing for, I don't have anything, Dan, that you're not already aware of. So I'm not going to be, we're not going to be sharing anything you don't already know. So I think you're, you're free to go on this one. And uh, I'll just keep, I'll reach out again to Greg and Addy and, uh, work on developing this group, because I do think there's some inertia uh, forming after this meeting in Sweden to perhaps get the metrics conversation kickstarted here. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Yeah, and I'm just sending him a black message as well. So kind of pushing on my side. So yeah, so if you do, that'll be great. Okay. All right. Um, so I, uh, yeah, so I won't be on in two weeks, but I guess maybe in Four weeks Four. and it's probably Thanksgiving week. <laughs> that's what I was actually just checking. Yeah, I think that's actually is Thanksgiving. So okay, maybe not. Yeah, uh, so, I won't be here in four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever the next one is after after the next yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Catch you later, Dan. Bye. Bye. Hey, Claude. I just dropped the uh, items in there. Not uh, really. The only the main thing that's a bit. Uh, different or added from the last time is just this conversation that Jonathan Starr and I and a group from that workshop in Sweden that I think I've mentioned before have started to to ideate around, which is, you know, how do we put uh, working software to create open source metrics together? And there's really two, two dimensions of that problem. One is research impact, which is very difficult to get at because it, it trails a very Quite, quite a while from the funding of research software. And then also trying to assess the life cycle state and health of research software as, a, as an endeavor. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm still just orbiting around at, at great distances here because I yeah, don't, yeah, no, I don't play that much in the, uh, in the space, but I'm really interested. So, yeah, so I, mean, I think there's, um, there's thing, I mean, there's, there are metrics that chaos is defined. There are things we know about how projects are created and made more or less sustainable and how to tune those parameters effectively to understand the scientific and research software case uh, is important because when we get outside of the major corporatized open source sectors a lot of the, the instrumentation of chaos metrics changes shape so signals that might indicate a project was being abandoned in the corporate sector don't necessarily indicate that in research software because right. you have these cycles of funding hmm. is there um is there anything i'm, I'm trying to set up um Grimoire? Grimoire? I don't know how you pronounce that. Grimoire Lab? Grimoire, yeah. Um, in an effort to determine which open source projects are most likely to be around for, you know, the next two years, the next right. while. That's, that's sort of an open-ended yeah. question. Um, and it's basically, you know, we're looking at this at work and we want to figure out which open source projects we can depend on while we do our open source project. Um, is there anything that talks about the measurements that uh, indicate which ones are 
most stable, most likely to succeed. There, you know, there I think I shared a, a paper with you that, that gets at like six key metrics okay. that help help to, that's it's based on corporatized data, but I think those there is a there's not a zero relationship with other with the scientific space, but that's also again where we're working to tune the models that we're building around the scientific and research software case. I think the as you look at um, as you look at if you're taking like a package that you want and trying to understand the sustainability of things that you import into it is that kind of what you're trying to accomplish yeah that's that's pretty much it yeah yeah so the i think the first metric that's interesting which i don't think grimoire lab has but auger does is uh just looking at the age uh, when the last release of a diff of these different libraries that you depend on was so you can look at your from your project's perspective we calculate a lib year but if we also have a we also have the same we have data that indicates when the last time a library was released and i would say that anything that you depend on that has not had a release in say the last six to 12 months is at risk for possibly going stale or not being maintained and so you can get that out of an auger uh, database doesn't that vary depending on how mature it does. The project it does. is, I mean, I was thinking, you know, there's... There's a couple of things it varies based on, like in the corporate space, it's a little bit easier because frequent releases are a very strong signal because anything that's being used heavily is also getting maintained heavily. If over in the scientific space, though, I think there are libraries that we use that are not updated as frequently. And in, <laughs> how many uh, times do you need to implement chi-square? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And they, yeah. yeah, so they, <clears throat> I mean, effectively, the only updates that occur on those are, they relate to security or just keeping yeah. up with the versions of Python or R uh, that come into come into place. And of course, anything in the machine learning space has to be routinely updated. So the Fortran compiles on the latest version of Python's connector to the Fortran code that all that stuff is referring referring to. <clears throat> I think NumPy and SciPy are very heavily Fortran under the hood, yeah. for example. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I tried to get Augur to work and it, it didn't. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I might go yeah, back now that I've, I've gotten through the Grimora to at least get it up and running. I found some issues with their Docker stuff, but... Uh, yeah and there's issues with our docker stuff as well that i need to update so maybe give me two weeks <laughs> oh maybe i'll get them in there for you <laughs> i'm lucky i know that on the, the grimoire labs i had to they have with their mounting file system inside the docker container uh, and it doesn't work with the latest versions unless you give it a z on the end colon z to tell it yeah, use the permissions so that you can wow. use it, you can read it and write it. Otherwise it goes, no, you don't have permissions. So that's a Docker idiosyncrasy? Yeah. Well it's the new Docker. It's it's whether or not you're going to allow um the permissions that are on the file system to determine whether or not the internal system, the internals of Docker, the the application running inside of Docker. Um has access. Uh, whether the external file system is going to control whether or not the internal file system is visible inside the application. Wow. Uh, good grief. Um, so, you know, you that's... can, there were ways to do it before that were really complicated and they've made it much simpler. Um, and so now you can um, mount file systems and make sure that the container can't read them if that's what you want to do you know it has some other weird ones like you can no longer mount um temp the as a uh directory you can't remap it so you can't oh. mount it as another named directory 
Interesting. Um, so if you have something like, you know, auger slash data slash temp, and you want to map that to the slash temp directory in the operating system, it won't let you do that. Huh. That's, that's a, that's a big change actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can create a subdirectory under temp and then mount to that, but you cannot remap temp itself. Huh. That seems, um, that's, I'm sure that's related to some of the security concerns that have yeah. uh, basically uh, been floating around Docker for five or more years at this point. Yeah, um, yeah I'm sure it's, it's something like that. But uh, yeah, so I you know, beat my head against the wall with the, the software for about a week, finally got it working. Although I'm uh, just today expanded the number of websites I wanted to look at and I'm not sure it's actually pulling the data, so I don't know. Maybe I didn't get it right. We'll see. So, anyway, I yeah. need to get back to All right. other things. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye.